Alrighty, it's just about 1.30 and it's time for Comments X. It's uh, Wednesday, February 15th, 2012. Yes, 2012. That dreaded year when the world is supposed to end. And I haven't forgotten, I'm still working on the uh, documentary for the Mayan calendar and, and indeed all astronomical calendars. Uh, it was an interesting day yesterday. I did more of uh, my stroll around uh, YouTube, uh, tried some more editing, tried to sort of working out the different types of formats that I want to publish in. Uh, I decided that uh, uh, I'm going to make more of an effort to publish in the full widescreen uh, format that, uh, that that's standard for YouTube. Uh, this video, the Comments X, uh, does that it actually goes it does the uh, full widescreen for some reason when I upload the AVIs uh, it doesn't do the widescreen so there's the uh, the uh, there's sort of a difference between uh, the comments X and the other comments which are done in the other room so I'm gonna try and resolve that discrepancy that's what I've been working on I was working on yesterday sort of looking at uh, the how things are encoded and trying to find out the best way to sort of fill out the screen size. Uh, beyond that, I went by, uh, uh, went through my uh, YouTube channel selector and went by a couple of different pages. I went by uh, uh, Helicopter's page. I went by Right and Proper Ladies page. Uh, they seem to have sort of, uh, I think, oh, well, I mean, you get, it's, it was Valentine's Day yesterday, so if, if people get busy and they're, they're doing stuff, that happens, so. But of course, the, uh, with, Zoe was uh, last week was afraid that uh, the all the right and proper ladies uh, the the collab channel was starting to fall apart. My uh, geek instinct is not that; is that they're all hiding on me. <laughs> you, know, you hang around for a bit after you know the first few times things are nice, and then after a while people start moving off down the distance. And as you start noticing that, uh, you know you even knock on the door and uh, everyone's hiding in the house and. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, sort of the, the, the geek and nerd experience. Uh, but uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I went around other channels to see when I dropped by, drop by Nerds RL uh, to see how they're doing. So they're, I guess they're still looking for a place to live. Um, that seems to be in there that she's doing. Uh, Cassandra's doing Taekwondo and uh, working on becoming a stunt person. Uh, then I went by. Uh, uh, Jen pens and said hello. Uh, copied out what she wanted me to copy out because uh, then she should say uh, give a shout out to uh, me and my channel, and so I did that. And it was just strolling around, seeing what I, what was out there. Uh, what, I, what 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 the interesting the interesting thing to me is that, uh, and this is sort of a hard thing to swallow, is that uh, a lot of the younger uh, YouTubers out there do a lot better job um, at, on video editing than I do. Uh, I know some of them are using um, either uh, the Apple uh, Final Cut Pro or they're using Adobe Premiere. Uh, and those are two uh, professional end packages, so uh, I, I'm, my, my packages aren't anywhere near that. They're uh, basically hobbled together pieces on my uh, Linux desktop. Uh, and I'm still, so, you know, if I want to do get something done, I had to sit down, script it out in terms of the uh, you know I have to do the coding for the for the program, uh, and then uh, figure out all the kinks and bugs in it so I can finally get it working properly. So that's in addition to doing getting, doing and getting the editing right. Uh, I noticed uh, that on some of my coding is it, when I split split the uh, video into segments that. Uh, it doesn't always lip sync properly. That there's there's a, some occasionally a lip syncing error uh, occurs in there. So, but anyways, uh, I am slowly getting these these problems worked out. So that uh, I think this will be my uh, first week uh, of regular work in terms of adding in uh, uh, research from around the library. So uh, my 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 e library now is uh, at least a hundred thousand books plus 
there's three terabytes with a, with a hard drive space that's literally filled. Uh, three terabytes is, is uh, 3,000 gigabytes. Uh, I'll be adding this year. I'll be adding another two terabytes to move up to a five to move up to a five terabyte capacity, or five thousand gigabytes. And that's uh, that, uh, I do. I, I do about uh, about seven hundred and fifty gigabytes worth of information storage a year. That's how much uh, uh, information I end up collecting from my uh, from my library. Uh, and then uh, because of Linux and the way Linux work works I'm able to con sort of connect uh, the internet uh, to uh, my desktop so I can add uh, and this is one of the things I have been doing on, on YouTube and, and, and this is how you can actually use YouTube as a library for a res research project uh, I have a Greek Middle Eastern background so I was still sort of looking around to see what was out there in terms of, of my, you know the music that uh, I kind of grew up with and the interesting thing I found is that you could type the music by where it came from. They actually gave you a lot of uh, people say, I'm from this village here, I'm from that village there. And as you start clicking around and, and collecting the village music, uh, and this took me about six months to do, you can start hearing differences in region to region. Uh, of the various different types of music, and you can see how one is influenced by other, you know, and you can see how things, uh, uh, how influences carry across the Silk Road, how you can have uh, one set of music uh, in, uh, let's say, like Crete and uh, Cyprus, and then still have the same type of, uh, similar type of music in Lebanon, and then go all the way into India, and find the exact same type of music. And the thing, the thing is, this is uh, sort of a no-brainer when you're going to, towards the west uh, from from Lebanon into Egypt, right? It was, uh, Egypt is west of uh, is west of uh, of Lebanon. Uh, when you go into Egypt, you can hear this, the, 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 you know, what they call the Syrian influence of music. Uh, a lot of uh, Arabic music actually has its. Uh, Arabs will dis disagree on this, but the primary center of music was uh, Damascus, and it's not that it, that 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 it's that that uh, it's not the thing that that Syria owns the music because there is no con no, there's no real concept of ownership. It's where the influence, the primary uh, centers of influence. Uh, and uh, Syria was, for a long time, uh, one of the major centers of culture. Uh, it influenced uh, Greece. It influenced uh, a, a large chunk of the Middle East. Uh, so a lot of, and this is even true of the Egyptian singer Muhammad al-Bakr. Uh, Muhammad al-Bakr, uh, al even though he was Egyptian, he began. He began. Started off and was heavily influenced by the Syrian school of music in Damascus. So, it, it, with YouTube, if you uh, you can actually start going and filling out these 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 um, these ideas and these sort of these observations with actual music from different areas. And the best way to do it is is you, is you, you're looking for people who are posting music and videos from their villages. So you're looking primarily at village people. If you're looking at village people and you find their music online, you can often sort of see how uh, music uh, evolved from way back when into the current music. And then you can start going into a study because the Western music didn't develop until much later on. Western music uh, really came into its own rush. Yeah, you know, it, it it started with with the classical musicians. So the, the, the classical, the, the, that was basically around the 1600s, 1500s, 1600s is the beginning of the classical period. So if you consider that uh, that the Syri the Syrian music was around before Christ uh, and continued its influences, 
the direct influence is all the way up and through the Arab conquests around the 700, 800 AD. Uh, and this is what people don't realize is that the Arab influence in uh, the Middle East, and this is where the, the Middle East is not necessarily Arabic, uh, because the Middle East itself is far older than the Arab culture itself. The Arab culture itself, the Arabs are, are much, uh, if you want to relate them in history, the Arabs are to the Middle East as the Romans were to the Greeks. So basically, with, with, with the Roman Empire, you have the Roman Empire, uh, 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 the Romans, going and conquering the Hellenic Empire, and then absorbing and taking over, taking on the culture of the Hellens. So what happens is that you have, even though you have the Latins in there, the primary language uh, of Rome, that was still the common language around the world at the time, was still Greek. Because, not, and you can even see this in the, in the Roman gods. The Roman gods are essentially uh, transforms or a modification of the Greek gods. Uh, this is what has happened in the Middle East. The Middle East, uh, uh, in its post-Roman period, well, really post-Roman period, but because the Roman, this is what you understand, the Roman Empire was not a Western Empire. The Roman Empire was an Eastern Empire with the Hellenic Empire, and its, its primary area of culture was Egypt all the way to India. So it was more, it was more south and then east, right? So it, that, that, and that's where the culture came from. Then you, you had basically the way you would describe it is you have the pagan period, then around 380 you have the Christian period come in, and then around 7800 you have a splitting of the uh, monotheists into a, 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 a fragmenting into a variety of different groups, and one of the groups was the uh, the Arabs, uh, they were the Muslims, the Islam. And they came in and started conquering around 700 AD. Uh, at the same time, Europe started developing, and it under Fra under the Frankish king Charlemagne uh, started creating more of a Western uh, Western uh, European leaning Roman Empire rather than an Eastern leaning Roman Empire. And this is what happened in. Uh, 1054, when we call the, we call the Great Schism, this is an important date for uh, even Roman history, is this is when you see a split in the Roman Empire, the Western European Roman Empire and the Eastern European Roman Empire. Both were Christian, but one was European and one was, uh, one was European and Western, and one was uh, the old uh, European, the old, uh, sorry, the, sorry, the old Eastern um, Christianity and empire. So, and it's in the round of a thousand, yeah, but between 800 and, and, and 1054, you had a series of cross wars where, where Europe was starting to become more adventurous, and by, uh, uh, let's say, 1100 AD, uh, uh, 1100 AD giving it sort of uh, even numbers here, uh, this is when you start having the Crusades. Uh, the first Crusades began in Europe, uh, particularly the Battle of Hastings, and then the papacy started pushing its power into the Middle East, and the, so you had all this occurring. And for those of you who want to know uh, why Columbus actually sailed for America, it was because the spice routes in 1492. Uh, had collapsed around that period, time period, that just around the 1400s, uh, you had the collapse of Constantinople and the Islamists, the uh, shut off and closed off the, uh, the, tr the uh, trade routes to the east where all your spices came from. Uh, that route was shut off and they had to find a second route uh, to uh, India, to Asia, to get at the spices.
And so this is what, what ended up allowing Christopher Columbus to sail is that uh, he was on the search for spices and that's why he was going to India. His, his reason for going to India is they needed spices. And it was sort of <laughs> they bumped into uh, North America and America by mistake. They had no idea that it was there. And that's kind of re the reasons why even when they got they didn't know that, that it was America. They thought that they were in India. Uh, talking about getting lost, and if you want it for the girls out there, uh, you can now uh, infer that uh, men not reading maps uh, and insisting they're not lost goes back to even, even, that far, even that far back, back to Christopher Columbus. Because even when they were where they were, they were still writing back and insisting that they were in India. And that's why Indians are known as Indians here in North America, you know, the woo type of Indians. And uh, you know, that's stereotypical because <laughs> there are actually two types of Indians. The Indians that are, are part of from that are, that, are, that, are, that are from North America aren't really Indians. They're North Americans. They're Americans. They're not Indians. Indians are from India. Not from this continent. So that's uh, you, can, you, you, can, you can start seeing how that's the beginning of, of the European music there. that's the beginning of the European Empire the M European Empire and its culture grows from there on out first with the Catholic Church and most of the uh, writers who were the musicians at the time if you're looking for Vivaldi and a lot of the early Italian writers uh, they were all fundamentally well they were all, at one point in time they were all working for the church the church, the papacy, was the center of all things. You wanted to write some music, you went to the papacy, you got a job as a musician, and you started turning up hymns and music for the church that was going on in the churches and stuff like that. And that's why your churches were often, and uh, this was during one of the reforms in the Catholic reforms, they transformed the churches from a house church, which they had, which they had been before, uh, uh, in, the, in the Eastern Christian religion, uh, most of the churches are home churches. They're, it's centered around the house, not around the cathedral. The Western church completely turned that upside down, removed all of the house, the original church ideas, and brought in a theatrical church. So instead of going, when you if you're in the Eastern church, you're supposed to be going to church because you're going to your father's house. All the pictures you have up, your icons and stuff like that, uh, these are members of your family. Like, I have one right behind me. Uh, uh, to my left, there's a picture on the door there. Uh, that's part, it's not, a, it's not there particularly for religious reasons. It's there because that's my family member. Right? And when you go to church, you're going, and church means house of the Lord. Uh, if you go back and do an, uh, a study of the Greek history of the word, it means uh, house of the Lord. And because the Lord is, uh, asks you to call him your father, or he's part of your, is, is, is part of your family, is no different than going to uh, an aunt or an uncle's house or a grandfa or grandparents' house for dinner. And that's the way church is, for, you know, for me. My church is going, I'm going to uh, my other house. That's all it is. Uh, but in the Western tradition, uh, the West, it became more formalized. Uh, it became more institutionalized. And you had the creation of these theaters in the churches. So you're no longer going to, to a house to have dinner at. You're going to this grand, opulent place where the king will be. And it's centered around the God Almighty. It's centered around uh, uh, God the King. Uh, and it's centered around the what we call the awesomeness of the power of God's throne. The... The Greek term that the East understands, or should understand, any Eastern Christian should understand this, the patrimon. The patrimon is the is what the English refer to as our father, but the Greek is it's slightly different in Greek. Patrimon is not uh, a communal experience the way you have in the our father when you translate to the our father. Our Father says that God is our Father, and, and it's just li li it leaves loose like that. The, so we don't have a personal contact with our Father 
because our father isn't my father, it's just our father. Right? It's, it's a communal com uh, common interest. When you're talking about the Patrimon, if you listen to how the Greeks translate mo the mon, imon, you can translate, they, they make, a, make a mistake, and when they use the plural for mine, they say mines, right? So mine and mines in the Greek mind are the same thing. So when you say patrimon, yes, he's our father, but he's also my father too. There is, in the patrimon, there is a deep personal connection that doesn't exist in the our father. And is this deep personal connection that was removed from the West and created the uh, the thrones of Europe. And that's how the power centers, the churches in Europe were created. And if you wanted to make music, you went to the power centers, you went to the throne, you went to that theater, and you created music for that theater. So, uh, you can sort of, and then you can sort of parse out how everything develops from there using uh, YouTube and a whole bunch of other things, things as libraries to sort of get an understanding of what's actually occurring. So that's sort of uh, how I t get things done. And for those, I, I forgot to mention, there's uh, a comment coming uh, from uh, someone who, I can't remember who it was, I saw the email of it, uh, on my atheism thing about how atheism and atheists don't need to prove God doesn't exist. That the burden of proof is on the uh, theists, or what they call religion. Uh, I will comment on that later, but uh, this will sort of give you some sort of background into all of this. Uh, if you want to look at the, the differences between the East and the Western Christianity, and you need to be careful there because there are many Eastern Christian groups right now. There are a lot of them out there who look Eastern Christian, like the Eastern Christians, but are not. They've fallen into a variety of different uh, sort of called subheadings where the understanding of Patanimon is not the personal direct connection of Patanimon. Uh, it, it, it centered the, their views, uh, and then there's a number of them out there that are called mystical sects. Their views are centered around a few uh, who we call holy people or prophets or seers. And these prophets and seers uh, demand and get uh, direct obedience, uh, unquestioning obedience from the people who follow them. But they look like and talk like uh, Eastern Christian relig uh, uh, people or that type of theology. So you got to be careful out there. Think about what you what you what you what you uh, what you're doing or what you're looking at. Uh, you don't necessarily have to say yes right away. There is a process you need to sort of think about. Uh, anyways, uh, I'll talk to you more about this later on because I will add a bit. I'm going to add a little bit more of this uh, concept of uh, of how things develop in some of the Greek. Uh, in the Omega Constructs uh, comments, so I'll be doing that later on today. Alrighty, I'll talk to you later on.